We welcome you on this Sunday afternoon to Tulsa, Oklahoma, where we kick off the 2017 American Athletic Conference men's soccer slate. The 19th ranked team in the nation, the SMU Mustangs, are in town to square off against the home squad, Golden Hurricane. Hi, everyone. Lincoln Rose along with Roland Garensway. Bruce Howard will join us soon enough down on the sidelines to help kick off this afternoon's broadcast. But, Roland, it's a brand new soccer season here with the men. We're with the three time champions out of Tulsa against a top 25 program that's red hot coming in to Oklahoma SMU. Well, both these teams are absolutely stacked across the board. SMU always seems to be in the mix for a national championship as well. This is going to be a great one today. Let's take a look at your keys to the matchup. First up for the visitors. Well, this game, this team is coming off of a three-game win streak where they've scored six goals and conceded nothing. So very powerful at the back. So they need to continue to play with that swagger and build on that natural momentum. And as for the home squad, Golden Hurricane, again, they had that big win over Stanford, but they've been struggling to find points since then. Absolutely. They've actually conceded at least two goals in every game but one. So they really need to shore up that defense and, and really stay compact today. Some of the best men's student athletes in the college game reside here in the American, including this young man for SMU. Absolutely. Just scoring goals in buckets so far. Five goals, four assists, and a litany of honors to his name, not least of which named a Mac Herman Trophy semifinalist. Yeah, Mauro Citro, you'll recall, a couple years ago was the conference's offensive player of the year and an All-American looking to regain that form here this season. And for the home squad, Tulsa in Rocha. Has a good one in the midfield. Well, he's absolutely in integral to this this team. He's been named man of the match in two of Tulsa's six games, chipped in three goals and an assist so far this season. When we come back, we'll have a chance to bring in Bruce Howard, counting down to kick off opening kick for the conference opener, Golden Hurricane and Mustangs. Up next on the American Digital Network. Yes. My mom actually never finished elementary school. Because my mother was a refugee, she didn't speak English when she arrived to this country. And she had told me when I was in high school, you need to get a degree for the both of us. In my four years at SMU, I've been able to accomplish three degrees. I've gone from Iraq to DC to Dallas. And I've been able to work with refugees, work with inmates, and also manage a political campaign. The collaborative environment here at SMU really provides a ton of opportunities for students. I'm Kovan Barzani. World changers are shaped here. I'm Kirk Smith, and this is my story. I'm a captain of TU's track and cross country teams, and I'm a Rhodes Scholar. My life's pretty simple. I run, I work, and then I run some more. My research focuses on combating climate change by driving down the cost of energy storage. And that's my story, so far. Mustangs and Golden Hurricane about to kick, but before we get underway, let's send things down for the first time today to Bruce Howard. Hey, thanks, guys. This is a great rivalry. There's no question that both teams are tradition-laden with SMU reaching the College Cup and Tulsa's reached as far as the Elite Eight. As far as SMU success this year is concerned, head coach Kevin Hudson felt that his team has been much better prepared this year. He they were a little complacent last year, 2016, after going to the Sweet 16 in 2015. And especially the eight seniors really rededicated themselves to their crafts, worked so hard in the summer, and that's one reason they've had the success. As Coach Hudson said, once you're at the top of the mountain, the view is great, but sometimes you forget how you got there. Well, they've relearned how they got there in SMU, obviously 19th in the country and a 6-1 and one record. What they're concerned about with Tulsa is the fast-break offense the Hurricane possess, and Coach Hudson said, says certainly if they're able to control the pace and keep their structure, they should be fine. On the Tulsa side, head coach Tom McIntosh in his 23rd year, he has changed the form of his team for this game. Normally, they are a 3-5-2. Today, they'll be a 4-4-2. One of the reasons, an extra defender to stem the SMU attack. Another reason is he wants his outside backers to support when he attacks as they often do so that's one of the keys for Tulsa another key TU is very concerned about the set pieces of SMU the ponies have scored a lot on set pieces this year that'll be one of the keys to a Tulsa victory today another aspect it is warm here in Tulsa temperature probably going to be 88 to 90 degrees hydration definitely a factor for both teams guys Bruce, thank you very much. Always great to have Bruce with us. And again, we'll check in with him throughout the day down on the sideline. Roland, he 
Again, mentioned one way that Tulsa was going to try to address what you noted in that leaky defense, adding an extra man in the back. Absolutely, just another man just to shore up that defense and really stay compact back there, especially with a forward like Cicero. He's so dangerous. He's a big body as well, uh, as good in the air as he is with his feet. Um, so Tulsa really just need to keep an eye on him. He mentioned both of the coaches, including Tom McIntosh of Tulsa in those 23 years now at the helm of this program. He himself is a 1988 alumnus of Tulsa. Great pride in this program that he has helped build. And on the other side of things for SMU, of course, Kevin Hudson, an 04 SMU degree holder in his own right, helped lead them to that 2000 college cup back in his playing days. He's just their fourth all-time head coach for SMU, now in his third year at the helm, but a long time as an assistant coach as well. Well, that, he, he's got a long tradition there at SMU. Both of these coaches have a tradition with both of these teams, so just a lot of pride on the line. And you can really see it the way they, that their team performs. Uh, they always put their heart on, on the field. And again, as we introduce our coaches to you, there you see the profile for Kevin Hudson, your man for the Mustangs out of Dallas, including leading them to that Sweet 16 back in his first campaign. It was a great introduction to what the new regime would be like with him getting that promotion. Well, it's a big uh, responsibility as well. SMU have a storied tradition, especially in Texas, uh, obviously one of the powerhouses in the state and as well as in the country. So uh, a, a lot of pressure on him as, as a coach, but that's something that you relish. One of my favorite parts about this sport is how the young fans get to be involved early on with some of their favorite idols. As both teams shaking hands before we, ha as we wrap up the introductions, want to mention... Uh, that we did have the women's meeting between these two clubs. It wrapped up just moments ago. It went to overtime, 2-2, and 11 seconds in. Tulsa did not disappoint the home crowd as Chrissy Holmes found the golden goal. Well, she's a very important player for them, and obviously coming up big time and time again, she does again against SMU. Uh, it was an exciting match. We got to see a little bit of it before this match started. So, yeah, another big win for Tulsa. So again, SMU will be wearing the all-red kits today, visiting Tulsa, SMU on a three-match winning streak. Their last loss was when both of these went, teams went over to California. They each tangled with number one Stanford as well as with Santa Clara on Friday and Sunday nights. It would prove to be for SMU a loss against Stanford, but since then, three straight wins for these Golden Hurricane. This club led by Tom McIntosh, they beat Stanford but since then has struggled against Brown and the other night against Creighton. But you look at, again, what they have built in now over two, almost two and a half decades with Tom McIntosh at the helm. Again, just a, a coach that uh, has t tons of experience. Uh, he's an old head. He's very traditional thinking. And, uh, but he knows how to, how to lead his teams to a win, and uh, he's going to look to do that again today. Those so veteran coaches at the helm as... It is finally time. You've got those non-conference matchups under your belt. You know this year's roster for your respective club a little bit better. But how will they fare in this difficult conference? It's a conference where Tulsa has been able to, again, find a way in a shootout three straight years in the conference tournament at the expense of teams like USF, UConn, to get that automatic bid into the NCAA tournament. Tulsa now has been to the postseason 11 times in the NCAA dance. SMU trying to get past, get back to the NCAA tournament for a 31st time in this rich history. Well, that's part of what makes this matchup so exciting. Again, the talent level on both of these clubs is consistently at such a high level, and uh, they're very easy, even, evenly matched. Excuse me. Uh, so this is, I'm ready for some fireworks today. Oh, by the way, a lot of these players grew up playing with one another. A lot of players out of Texas, out of the Dallas areas. As we are underway, American Athletic Conference men's soccer. As again, the Golden Hurricane welcoming to town the Mustangs. Lincoln Rose, Roland Garen's way with you. Bruce Howard is our man down on the sidelines. As uh, we look forward to hearing from the coaches throughout the match and get some updates from Bruce along the way. For the Golden Hurricane, again, back in goal. You have Marcel De Silva, the third year sophomore, the Floridian who's made his way over to Oklahoma. Compete in the Sooner State and an early souvenir as we're just underway here in the opening minute. Ball tossed back in by Devin Sutton. 
Sutton making his third appearance. Mentioned these Texas kids. He's out of Trophy Club from the Dallas area. Went to Byron Nelson High School. I know it's named after a golfer, but they have had some great soccer over there in Trophy Club uh, with that high school. Absolutely. They, have a, they won a state championship a few years back. I remember doing some commentary for them. Uh, great program down there, and he's coming out of a, a very rich tradition down there in Byron Nelson. Michael Nelson has the goal kick teed up. He's a fifth-year senior out of the Houston area from Katy, Texas. Seven Lakes, another great program. This is your two-time all-conference goalkeeper of the year as a freshman and sophomore. Uh, last year was the first time he did not garner that recognition. But now making his eighth appearance in frame. This is a young man allowing just .86 goals per contest. As this has been a stingy Mustangs group, they have not allowed a goal since they surrendered three to Stanford three matches ago. As the Mustangs trying to build speed up through the midfield. See early on, very patient possession so far, and as I said, that they just give it away. But it was a nice little build up, build up of play there. They'll they'll get some confidence going forward. And they'll work it along the back line through Sutton. And as talented as these programs are, they have been able to work youth in to their starting lineup. Sutton, one of those freshmen, as he finds Velasquez, again, the San Antonio native. And Velasquez will earn a corner kick opportunity. A big set piece here in just the third minute in the home side strike for the early advantage. There's a nice little piece of individual skill there. And some good work down Velasquez to earn that corner. We're going to see here a couple step overs before then. Tries to get in across. It's deflected out. And Tulsa earns their first corner of the game. Velasquez, the right boot, looking for his first assist on the season. Had the right idea, an opportunity within 10 yards of the frame. Just could not reroute it on towards the woodwork. And that means a stress-free set piece in defense for the opposing goalkeeper, Michael Nelson, who has that captain's armband. Velasquez put in a great cross, right where you run it, just, just around that penalty area right got there. It. And they got ahead on it, but just couldn't quite deflect it on frame, unfortunately. So Nelson has only required 10 saves so far this year. Four shutouts already under his belt. And this is his final campaign. You see the strong leg able to change real estate in a hurry. Both of these teams so far look like they're playing with tons of confidence and possession. Really trying to get forward and be dangerous in the attacking third. Mustang can continue to apply pressure, but Tulsa able to perhaps catch a breather here, trying to bring it across midfield, just unable. Instead, on the boot of Jared Rice. Rice, out of the Dallas area as well, from Plano, Texas, did not have to go far from Plano East High to sign up and become an SMU Mustang. Now a senior in his final campaign. With 21 assists already on Jared's resume. Again, you're looking right there at Gustavo Vargas out of Colombia. It's an international game, and... It is hard to find a top flight program in the men's or women's game that doesn't have some international influence. Well, it's just a tribute to these types of programs, you know, uh, to be able to get in the, the international player and sort of maybe sometimes as the ball goes into the box there, it's a nice save by the goalkeeper. Sometimes uh, foregoing a professional, a professional career to come over to the States and get an education and at the same time uh, play some quality soccer. As, again, just simply leaping in front of the six, De Silva will be credited with his first save of the day. Now the goalkeeper has been challenged really just yet, though Tulsa did have a corner kick a minute ago. Just could not put the punctuation on it. A nice run here along the near touchline. Devin Sutton again, the freshman. There's nobody to play with. And SMU quickly sends it the other way, a foot race on a 50-50. And this will be SMU for a toss. No, let's see which way it goes. Tulsa so far really made a point at attacking the left flank of this SMU defense. They might see a weak point there. So SMU will continue to apply pressure, awarded this ball. See backtracking Zach Stavro, making his seventh appearance on the back line. Again, another Dallas native. He went to Jesuit Dallas, same school as Jordan Spieth. In the 
Lex. It's going to be a recurring theme when talking about yeah. these SMU players. The Houston and Dallas areas are such a hotbed for high-quality soccer. But it also applies for Tulsa. They are looking in the same backyard for talent. Rice will send it into the box. Almost as valuable as a set piece with his strength overhead with the throw. Definitely the long throw can be a really valuable weapon. The flight of the ball is a little bit different than if one were to kick it. So sometimes it can be a little confusing to the, some defenders. A ball on the boots right now for Talon Maples. His eighth appearance this year. The defender out of the Central Texas area, just north of Austin, the capital city. 1v1 in SMU. Thought they had a chance, but the flag will be up. Oh, it was too good to be true. Well, that was just a beautiful one-two and actually a nice finish. He didn't know the whistle was going to be blown. We're going to see it here. Beautiful one-two into the box. And I think the offside was on the first pass, not quite the second. Again, that was Quasho who thought he had that golden opportunity to find the opening strike. Sutton will lob one in, and making no mistake is Nelson. He'll roll it up onto the boots of Caleb Smith. Smith out of Arlington. SMU early on making a point to be able to play out oh, from the back. Okay. Sure. Right. They really want to keep possession of the ball as much as they possibly can. I like the pace here early on. Both teams have been challenged and have been able to adjust. Again, SMU comes in with the best non-conference mark of any American team. Six wins, just one loss. That loss, again, came to number one Stanford. That was two nights prior to Tulsa's big win over Stanford. All that over in California. These two teams just happen to be a part of the same little classic over there with Santa Clara and Stanford. And both teams just so evenly matched. You never know what can happen. Ball chested down, turns and fires, and ultimately a chest stop is good enough for Michael Nelson. As most recent opportunity for Miguel Velasquez. That's a nice little chip over the top, but Velasquez has got to be a little bit more aware, standing in an offside position. But again, good build-up play from both teams. And again, while offside again is a foul, it, it's one you don't mind a few of. It means you're being aggressive in a match. Now, if it ultimately continues to cost you that chance to land the scoring blow, then you have to adjust and play a cat with a little more intelligence. The mark of a great striker is not only putting the ball in the back of the net, but it's being positionally aware of that back line and making sure you're staying on side. Mentioned Mustangs are 6-1 and one this year. Preseason picked fifth in this league. That tells you, again, the depth from one year to the next. Tulsa, conversely, picked second in this league behind USF. Come in with two wins, three losses, and a draw. Again, De Silva now in his fifth game in frame. We've seen Cooper Clark this year in frame as well, a true freshman out of Norman here in Oklahoma. The competition is going to be fierce to win this conference. As you said, a bunch of teams evenly matched. It's hard to really pick your favorite. Mauro Citro with a rare touch here early on. The second team all-conference senior called for the foul. As there you see the grief party Miguel Velasquez. And they'll get things restarted now. Midway through the 10th minute in Tulsa, Oklahoma, Golden Hurricane and Mustangs tangling. And their lone not pardon me, in their lone conference matchup. Could very well be on a collision course in the conference tournament. Again, the conference tournament will be hosted by the number one seed at the end of this the regular season at the end of the first week of November. Within 25, a lot of red shirts. They'll cross towards the back post and that's going to carry all the way to the far wing. And the Mustangs doing a nice job getting their first touch on it when that ball entered the 18. Mustangs looking very compact. That was a dangerous little chip ball into the center of the box, but dealt with well by that Mustang defense. Again, glad to have you with us here on the American Digital Network. This is our first men's soccer match of the season. Women made their debut for the year back on Thursday. And that one was a barn burner, a scoreless affair. 
It's absolutely exciting to watch. You know, both teams so evenly matched. Ended up being nil-nil, but it wasn't for the lack of opportunity. The women of UCF traveling to Cincinnati for that one. Yesterday, we were able to squeeze in some volleyball up in Temple. A full slate this year here on the American. And Tulsa's done a nice job for the past minute and a half or so, applying the pressure, keeping SMU on their heels. Mustangs now looking to return the favor. And so far, SMU have been pretty defensively sound. They've dealt with everything in a short span of time that Tulsa have thrown at them. Again, Tulsa right now in its own defensive third. Each team's had some early opportunities. Tulsa had our lone corner kick so far. A offside flag negated a early scoring strike for SMU. Ball chipped in, looking to run on. And this will be too heavy of a touch as it carries. Let's check back in with Bruce down on the pitch. Hey, guys, you uh, were talking about the Santa Clara and the Stanford games. Both Tulsa and SMU went out west, and uh, one team played. It was Tulsa playing Santa Clara on a Thursday and then Stanford on a Saturday and then vice versa. No question about it. These two teams are rivals. But Tulsa coach Tom McIntosh and SMU coach Kevin Hudson, they talked in the day in between. And obviously, after Tulsa's win over Santa Clara, Coach McIntosh shared information about Santa Clara with head coach Kevin Hudson, and Hudson did the same after uh, SMU lost against uh, Stanford on that Thursday night, the number one team in the nation. So, yeah, they're rivals, but they certainly talked to each other and shared some information about those teams out west. Thank you, Bruce. They both share a love for three letters, RPI. They want to make sure this conference is as strong as possible one week to the next. And if that means, again, trying to boost your foe today by helping strengthen their non-conference performance, it helps you in the eyes of the NCAA committee when they're making those at-large selections, something that Tulsa has not needed to worry about the past three years. They've taken care of business, of course, on that final day of the conference tournament. But SMU denied an at-large berth this past year. Well, any information when you're playing teams like UC Santa Clara and Stanford are going to be advantageous. Both those teams are just powerhouses nationwide. Well, this is not the standard hidden ball trick. <laughs> not amused. Again, Tom McIntosh, 1988 graduate of TU. Tulsa with the only corner today. They are outperforming their opponents 40 to 34 in terms of corner kicks secured. And this will simply be another goal kick. Again, SMU just getting caught offside. You love their attacking intent, but like I said, have to keep an eye on that Tulsa back line and make sure that they're staying even. Tulsa was rewarded for that victory over Stanford. The next coaches poll had them at number 20 in the nation. But again, the two match slide against Brown and just seeing that one a heartbreaker against Creighton in their last outing uh, five days ago. That was a two to one loss in overtime after they had grabbed the early advantage in the second half. Full speed ahead, right down the middle. Trying to strike through the heart of the midfield over the top. And just able to maintain his position is the keeper. And Michael Nelson as he extends and secures that ball. Still early on, but I think both coaches are going to be slightly disappointed in their team so far. Sort of relying on the long ball when both teams are definitely, as I say that, they put in a nice through ball. Yeah, that was a beautiful ball to roll on it. And pardon me, run on, but... You see the veteran keeper in De Silva never hesitating, getting off his line in a hurry. So saying both teams just seem to sort of rely on the long ball when they're skilled enough just to keep the ball on the ground and keep possession. Slightly a little, more, a little bit more patience required in possession. Tulsa plays on with the advantage here after the contact a moment ago. Worked along the back line and now out to the wing for some space. Which of these two sides will be able to land that initial blow? This is good. Or I, Easterling, will handle this throw. Easterling out of Frankfurt, Germany. 
safe to say that's nowhere near Dallas. Sophomore. Okay. Spent some time over in Biloxi, Mississippi for transferring over to Tulsa and able to extend all 10 digits of those gloves. Nelson able to stop another one that would have likely carried wide to the frame. Both keepers looking pretty sure-handed so far, but nothing dangerous from either side. Well, both have, both have had to be involved early on, which in a way you appreciate. Neither one just simply a spectator. They get the occasional touch, but neither has been under a very stressful situation. Again, Lincoln Rose, Roland Garen's way with you. Bruce Howard down on the sideline. We hope that... I have a chance to hear from the head coaches around halftime with this matchup. Perhaps talk to one of our key performers by the end of the night. Along the near touch line, Sutton trying to put it right to the top of the 18. I mean, it looks like there are three Golden Hurricane players for every one red kit you see out there. They are spaced so well and they're moving well. They are quite organized and they're hustling on and off the ball. I've been impressed by their movement so far. They always, always seem to try to get into space and receive the ball. Able to recapture this ball and the touch looks to be too heavy. Simply a goal kick coming up for the Mustangs. Back with Nelson. It's definitely something you like to see in a team where you have 11 players who want the ball. How's that on? Don't three, shy Carl? away from. Don't shy away from possession. Leave it, leave it on Both of these teams and will and play a seven-match yeah, so schedule in the American. In SMU looking to outperform their preseason expectations of the coaches that nailed them at fifth in the league coming into the year. And a lot of that, as SMU will win this ball on the foul, a lot of that was last year SMU going 6-9-1, 2-4-1 in conference, finishing seventh. And an off year for the men from the Metroplex. As again, Jared Rice back on his feet. Rice, a four-year starter, a brilliant first two years as a freshman and sophomore getting tangled up there with Thomas Wells, a true freshman out of Wichita. Clear foul there, and we'll see what kind of danger they can create in that Tulsa box. Defender Bryce Clark will look to handle this kick. Two assists on the year for the man from Los Gatos, California. Everybody gathered about 20 yards from frame. Clark will send them running. Header on goal off the post, and what a break for the home club. Well, that was an absolutely quality ball put into the box. It was a clean header. Try to put it across frame as you're supposed to do. Put the ball back where it came from. And we're going to see it here. Great header on the ball. And the post just saving Tulsa from going 1-0 down. A wonderful service, and in the end, just good fortunate for Tulsa as it hits the near post. And again, Tulsa did a good job of immediately just trying to put the pressure back on the Mustangs, but here comes SMU. When you put the ball on frame like that and get robbed of a goal, you really feel like you did get it robbed and you really want to get up the field and put the ball in the back of the net immediately. SMU will be called for the foul. Free kick coming up here for Tulsa. As here's where they get tangled up again. Ball simply back over to the home side. That's each other there trying to come back, play a little defense, and win possession back for the Mustangs. About 25 yards out. Looking for service, immediately denied, back in touch. as Jared Rice was not going to allow that one to pass.
chipped in. One man to play with, and the Mustangs hold their ground. The target for Tulsa was Velasquez, but he was not going to be given that good of real estate. Well, that was a beautiful ball chipped in there, but it was equally good defense from SMU, just being tough in the box and not allowing Velasquez get it, to get on the end of that ball. It was, again, Nelson collects it. That's your two-time all-conference goalkeeper of the year as a freshman and sophomore, 2014-2015. He's now a fifth year, a redshirt senior out of the Houston area. As we are about midway through this first half. Both sides have had quality chances. Perhaps a slight advantage for the Mustangs on a near miss. But all that matters is the current score. A couple of zeros still on the board here. And this is our first match of the year in conference play for SMU and Tulsa. SMU outscoring their opponents this year 15 to 6. They've only conceded one first half goal this season. Seven different scores have made them a dangerous group. A couple of men with five goals. Everybody else able to find one lone goal to be able to have an impact this year. That's what you want if you're a coach of the team. You know, you want strength and depth, maybe a couple of standout players, but you want, you know, 11 guys that, when given the opportunity, can put the ball in the back of the net. Tulsa, conversely, has been playing in some nail biters, being outscored this year now 10 to 9, but includes three overtime matches. One led to a draw, one a victory, and more recently a loss to Creighton this past weekend. Again, playing among all those defenders, but well executed passes so far here for the Mustangs. See just how technical this team is. Citro's your man. That time he's won. Borrows Citro. Looking to show off that right boot that made him the offensive player of the year two years ago. The former All-American. That's what you love seeing out of your star striker. Get the ball maybe 35 yards away. Has a shot. Not afraid to rip the ball and just see what happens. And as I say, if you don't shoot, you can't score. So I love that mentality from Citro. Play his stop will take a break. Water all around. 21 and a half still to go in the first half. Still looking for our opening strike here on the American Digital Network. My mom actually never finished elementary school. Because my mother was a refugee, she didn't speak English when she arrived to this country. And she had told me when I was in high school, you need to get a degree for the both of us. In my four years at SMU, I've been able to accomplish three degrees. I've gone from Iraq to DC to Dallas. And I've been able to work with refugees, work with inmates, and also manage a political campaign. The collaborative environment here at SMU really provides a ton of opportunities for students. I'm Kovan Barzani. World changers are shaped here. I'm Kirk Smith, and this is my story. I'm a captain of TU's track and cross country teams, and I'm a Rhodes Scholar. My life's pretty simple. I run, I work, and then I run some more. My research focuses on combating climate change by driving down the cost of energy storage. And that's my story, so far. And obviously with the student athletes, player safety always a concern. The reason for the water break is, you know, technically it's fall, but try to tell that to these young men and the officials who are constantly moving out there on the pitch. There's a reason why we didn't uh, slap a tie and suit onto Bruce today. Absolutely understood. And it is a hot one out there. It's going to be so humid as well. And it's, it's kind of tough conditions to play football in. Uh, but these players are soldiers. You know, they're in shape by this time of the season and they'll soldier on. Well, just prior to break, remember Mauro Citro sent a screamer wide of goalkeeper De Silva and the frame as SMU. This is a situation where they actually crossed the Red River, went into Tulsa's backyard over in Norman, got Citro from Norman North. He was the 2013 Oklahoma Gatorade Player of the Year. 
and he hasn't been on the ball as much as he's wanted to so far this this game but you see his first real offensive touch and he takes a shot it's just off frame but you see what his intentions is he has that range he's a creative player and as a result he's not your typical forward they actually play him back in the midfield he does like to come back and sort of seek possession. He'll, he'll come back and defend a little bit on that midway point. So he's a hard-working forward, and he's also a big body, so dangerous in the air. Just a, a threat to this Tulsa defense in every aspect. Talk about dangers in the air again. Heads colliding there as Christian Borum knocked Noggins with Raleigh Rocha. Good to see Rocha able to get up. The Houston area native out of Spring, Texas. That's a tough fall there as well. Hurts his back. Rocha, both of his goals were against Stanford this year in that big matchup, the Tulsa victory. Both of those goals were actually on penalty kicks as they trusted the young man to handle them. Again, he's a leader in their midfield. You can tell he just sits back when they're in the attacking third and just sprays balls all over the pitch. He's extremely skilled and technical. and just a great soccer IQ. SMU will work it around the back line, looking for an avenue forward. Tulsa applying just the right amount of pressure. This is nice patient, patient possession, though, from SMU. Midway through the 25th minute. As so far, scoreless between SMU and Tulsa. And Tulsa coming off of a match where they gave up an equalizer in the 90th minute, only to fall to a game winner in the 100th minute to Creighton this past weekend. Conversely, SMU, despite the loss to Stanford, that's their only loss this year. Six wins, three sandwiching that Stanford matchup on either side, including a current three-match winning streak. Again, that Stanford loss, just nothing to scoff at. Stanford, absolutely a quality team. Vitro, looking for an opportunity, will recapture this ball. Good cross field ball there. Clear foul and another dangerous free kick opportunity for SMU. Yeah, this will be a fantastic opportunity for the Mustangs who really haven't had a true set piece scoring opportunity. Garrett McLaughlin taken down. Again, the foul on Vargas, the Colombian. That was absolutely, absolutely a late challenge. This is about 30 yards out. Bryce Clark will hover over this ball, but all eyes will be on Cicero. They look to whip this ball right in between the six yard box and that penalty area. It's where the danger zone is. Clark with 15 career assists. Potentially looking for number 16 right here in a Mustang kit. With 18 and a half to go here in the opening half. Far post and never going to allow the Mustangs a chance to get on that one. Marcel De Silva had it well read. De Silva again just commanding his box. He's a big body as well. We're going to see it here. Just lofted the ball a little too much. Needed to be whipped in a little flatter and with a little bit more pace. But again, De Silva coming off his line, being aggressive, commanding his box, and gathering easily. They'll link back up with Sutton over here in front of the SMU bench. Tulsa almost all of its numbers pushed forward now into the SMU half. And denied entry into the 18. Fifty fifty to run on out one a nice first touch. Will there be a second? Not a single red kit to come on that ball It was essentially one on three and did not bode well for the Mustangs chances of putting a goal on the board That's unfortunate because the SMU attacker worked so hard to get on the end of that and he put in a pretty good uh, cross field ball into the box, but again just had no help 
no one from the SMU midfield to push forward. Again, this is a SMU and Tulsa doubleheader. The women wrapped up. It went, we thought, to a situation that would delay us a tad here with the men's matchup. The women went to overtime, tied at 2-2, but Chrissy Holmes for Tulsa, 11 seconds into the start of the first overtime period. The third and final goal of the match for the home side. 3-2 the final, and Tulsa captures the full three points at home in the women's table. Well, it's so important with such a stacked division that you get your three points at home at every single opportunity. That is something that the Tulsa men will try to duplicate here. And the 90 minutes plus that we'll have for you here on the American Digital Network. Mustangs looking to go on the road and steal some points. Just unable to thread that needle. SMU so far with the more dangerous of the opportunities, but you can see the quality that Tulsa possess. Fortunately, this SMU defense has just been rock solid in recent weeks. And just needed a little bit more on that pass to keep everything moving forward. Tulsa will be the first to step into its depth as Chase Bromstead will come on making his seventh appearance on the year the freshman out of Parkville Missouri making his conference debut we'll see what the youngster can contribute to this Tulsa attack and we talk about over the years how freshmen have been able to make a great impact a lot of that is look a lot of these young men just because they haven't stepped on a college campus before this year doesn't mean they haven't been traveling overseas. Great club play, great international play already on their resumes. Well, again, you know, I think these coaches aren't afraid to be, be able to play their youth. If you're good enough, you should be able to play, and I think that's a recurring theme in all of world soccer. Citro trying to save this opportunity. It'll cross the finish line. Simply a goal kick coming up. Right idea for the Mustangs. Citro is mindful to stay on side, but cannot preserve the opportunity. As Morrow will swing it around. This is good pressure from Velasquez of Tulsa. Oh, and desperate for forcing a turnover. Velasquez just pestering that back line, hoping to pluck one away and be able to fire one on frame. Not only is he technically skilled but he's extremely pacey and he can really cause problems for that Tulsa defense I mean for that SMU defense excuse me dangerous challenge they'll play on and struggling to get to that 18 nifty pass space on the wing Mustangs have enough to create congestion and the chip will carry high and over that's just okay. completely miss hit by Velasquez so there and again, Tulsa had some opportunities, but struggled a few times handling that ball. And he did, well, he did well to gather, but then tried to do a little step over, uh, just lost control. Eventually, the chance went, got back on the ball, and then just ended up skying it. SMU had a chance to recover. And the beneficiary here, the goalkeeper, Michael Nelson, never had to make a stop. 13 minutes remaining here in this opening half. And a foul will send us back the other way. And Garrett McLaughlin, another Oklahoma native who is on this SMU roster. He's from OKC, a two-time state champion at Heritage Hall, former Oklahoma Gatorade Player of the Year, just like Citro. Last year, here's your American Rookie of the Year, quiet so far here today. And you will forgive Devin Sutton if he does not still have his shirt tucked in after he continues to battle to stay on his feet and maintain possession for his son. Like that was good work and he showed great strength to stay on his feet. Eventually gets the call. We're gonna see it here just as his arms tucked back and his jersey just all over his back, but 
does well to stay on his feet. Though they will entrust this opportunity to the freshman from Bromstead who came in a couple minutes ago. If he'll swing one into the 18. Left boot delivery. And the Mustangs get the first touch. Again, just another quality of delivery by Tulsa. And again, SMU just dealing with it easily. Good back heel. Sent in. And the men in red continue to make sure they get the initial touch once that ball enters the 18. Bromstead. Again, the left boot have to be ready. Instead, it's this left-footed delivery that will continue to carry over the crossbar. It's simply a goal kick as we remain scoreless. That was Roly Rocha, who we highlighted in the beginning. Just gets in the ball, tries to curl in with his left foot. We're going to see here about 20 yards out. Tries to curl it with his left foot into the top corner. It goes sailing. Again, Nelson not worried at all. Nelson waits for the whistle and sends it up ahead. So, boy, yeah, just, just shoot like you're live. He you needs your shot, okay? Okay. Nice pirouette by Cicero. Not disappointing today. Morrow putting on a show. He needs to be more on the ball, I think, so far. He's really dropping deep into the midfield to find possession, but his teammates need to find his feet. See here, nice little bit of skill there. Final ball not there on that occasion. You can see the nice bit of individual skill that he possesses. Well, both teams credited with a couple of shots here today. No official shots on frame, although the frame has felt one. The frame did rescue Tulsa from giving up a goal. Tulsa had that early corner kick. That's the only one we've seen so far. Mustangs will wait for some numbers. Oh, looking to get on the same page. They'll have a flag up across the way. As you look at Dwight Williams, the sophomore out of Dallas, really over there at Fort Worth Country Day, part of the United States U15 and U17 programs. We talk about these student athletes who already have some international experience. And A lot of these kids, you know, especially in the Dallas area and in the Houston area, come from really big time clubs, playing in, t in tournaments like the Dallas Cup, prestigious tournaments like that. So they have a lot of uh, experience in big games. Some of these young men have had time in the FC Dallas Academy youth system. Mustangs want the handball, not going to get that call. FC Dallas, a beacon of not being afraid to play their youth. So again, just tons of, of experience from both these clubs. Well, this has been a well-matched opening half, and you just wonder if one of these two sides can Take that opening advantage into the locker room. Ball delivered, but deflected. A corner kick coming up for Tulsa. Their second of the match, another big opportunity. That was a beautiful bit of skill down that left-hand side. Took on three defenders and eventually beat them and earned a corner. So Nelson will organize the troops. And again, this is a left-booted freshman in Bromstead as it'll swing out. But he keeps it tight. The header goes wide. And again, Tulsa trying to make the most of these set-piece opportunities, but still empty-handed. That was another quality delivery by Bromstead. You can really see his ability to deliver a ball into the box. His teammates get his head on it, but unfortunately cannot deflect it into the back of the net. Mustangs 
not looking simply to build and over the top. They'll dribble it up through the midfield. Seven minutes remaining here in this opening half. Scoreless in the conference opener for both SMU and Tulsa here today. Tulsa, your home side. As fans able to get a two for one. The women's match preceding this, the men's matchup. And just so far, both these teams canceling each other out. Lots of skill and technical play on display so far. But no goals, unfortunately. Again, the coveted top spot at the end of conference play. Uh, the start of November will lit, lead to your club hosting the conference tournament semifinals and championship. Inside 25, but again, no man making a run on that ball. It's not on the same page there for Tulsa, unfortunately. Would have been a good ball had there been a diagonal run coming off the right-hand side. I don't know that Michael Nelson's heart rate has fluctuated much in this match. He's kept that back line organized well enough. Even when that ball slips into the 18, he hasn't had to do too much. Absolutely, this SMU back line has been on the same page all game. Here's Mauro Citro all the way back on his own 18. And he's one of their top offensive strikers. And just such a high work rate for such a big man. Really wants the ball at his feet at every opportunity. He'll surrender at this time to a teammate. You guys have four back. See a little bit better movement off the ball from SMU. Seems to be a lot of standing around whenever the midfield has possession. It needs to be constant movement as well as positional discipline. And it'll all reside all the way back with Nelson. Only about four and a half minutes left in this half. It really advantageous to score a goal just before halftime and really get some momentum going into the second half. Mustangs have that number 19 next to their name nationally. And the coach's most recent top 25 poll. As you see favoring right that, that right leg is Town Maples. Former Leander High School Lion from just north of Austin, Texas. Again, you'll see the contact, but it wasn't so much the initial contact. It was planting that right foot, it looked like, into the turf and getting it caught up. It definitely fell awkwardly, and it looked like a bit of a twisted ankle there. It looks to be okay. It looks to be running it off. You won't want to come off in such a, such a huge match. see it here again it won't be right there but there sticking it right in the turf leaving the impression we're gonna see another dangerous opportunity for SMU and another whipped in ball into the box Clark on the ball again looking for the header but Tulsa this time with the initial contact it's good D from Tulsa a nice whipped in ball there for SMU remember the strength here if he goes with the triple jump. <laughs> and this can be a dangerous opportunity here for SMU. A direct pass, corner kick coming up for SMU, the Mustangs. Go from a free kick to a toss and now setting up in the corner for the first time. Couldn't find an SMU head, but eventually won a corner. And so now the burden on De Silva and frame for Tulsa. Uh, here's your man for the set pieces, regardless. Bryce Clark mentioned two assists already this year. 15 on his career. You see that wind blowing right in the face. Clark delivers back post again. 
the Golden Hurricane gets on it first. And I believe that was Gustavo Vargas. Sophomore from Bogota, Colombia. <laughs> Don't mind if I uh, just occupy this spot. Anybody sitting here? <laughs> and give Tulsa credit. Getting to the ball first, not allowing SMU to create any havoc. Well, SMU have had a lot of dead ball opportunities, and other than that one that hit the frame, they've dealt with all of those crosses into the box very well. And Tulsa has officially survived. Looking for a counter of their own. And just enough Mustangs along the top of the 18. They'll concede a toss back here on the near side in touch. And that ball was not yet ready for play. As we'll have them toss it again. Doing the honors is Sutton. You know, I knew we were going to talk about a lot of freshmen, but I feel like we have talked about a lot of freshmen, including Sutton and Bromstead. And the chip again. The Mustangs were going to let you within 20, but nothing more. Not going to make it easy to get an open look. They've been extremely stingy all game and across the season as well. We're just seeing this, this incredible talent on display in their back line. Have not allowed a goal since September 7th. On the road at Stanford. These kids are committed to keeping a clean sheet on every occasion. And really see how hard they're working to stifle every Tulsa attack. Here comes Tulsa once again. And this one will simply slip into touch for a throw. Well, we are inside the final two minutes. Lincoln Rose, Roland Garen's way with you again. Bruce Howard, real star of the show, is down on the pitch, and uh, he's the guy who has the star power to actually attract the coaches. We'll have him check in with the managers on either side of half. You have to ask, they go to him. Could it be Tom McIntosh's club finding a goal here in the final 72 seconds? They'll have to back off this ball as SMU will have it go their way. See Colton Habecker jogging down the pitch out of Douglasville, PA from the Hill School. Former state of Pennsylvania, I should say Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, Gatorade Player of the Year back in 2013. Second generation soccer player. His dad played for the NC State Wolfpack. And this ball just quickly traverses from one in line to the other. Tulsa at home on this Sunday afternoon looking to end that two game skid that knocked them out of the coaches' top 25. And oh, by the way, it's conference play, and you're playing a top 25 foe today here in SMU. You have, as it appears, held them scoreless for the first 45 minutes of play. Again, like I said earlier, you know, both teams just canceling each other out. They've got tons of quality all across the field. It's led to a stalemate so far in this first half. No Mustangs have challenged De Silva here. Everybody content to let those final 30 seconds run off the clock, and we have officially reached halftime. Tulsa back at home today hosting SMU here in this conference matchup here in the American Athletic Conference. In just a moment, we'll have a chance to check in with Tulsa head coach Tom McIntosh. And let's go ahead and send things down to Bruce, who's with the top man for the Golden Hurricane. Here with head coach Tom McIntosh of the Golden Hurricane. Tom, your thoughts about the, the first 45 minutes? 
finish this one. Yeah, I mean, it went, you know, kind of according to plan. Um, obviously got to defend the free kicks, the set pieces. Uh, they almost got one there, obviously hit one off the post. Um, I think our wide play's got to get a little bit better. Uh, we got to do a little bit more with our, with our wide play, um, get some better service, and then try and create maybe just a couple better chances. Defensively overall, I think we've been pretty good through our play, so, you know, we haven't given up much. Like I said, just the, just the long throw and the set pieces. I was going to say the one scary one, certainly on the free kick, but for yeah. the most part, they only had the one corner kick in the first half. Yeah, the yeah, only one corner. So obviously we had, you know, we had the majority of the possession, um, which is good. And uh, like I said, we're just going to have to be disciplined. You know, we know we're just going to have to see this one out for 90 minutes. And um, yeah, I think it's, you know, like I said, the guys are playing okay. Obviously it's hot, so we got to try and manage the ball, keep it a little bit more. Um, and then, like I said, I think if our wide play can get a little bit better, maybe we can create. Um, you know, a couple good opportunities in the second half. It seems like SMU has kind of clogged the middle a little bit and, and stopped you from your fast break offense. Yeah, yeah, I think their back three has done a decent job. Um, you know, so that, you know, we're, we'll have to, like I said, try and work on how we're going to, you know, get beyond them a little bit, get behind them in the second half. Um, and if we can do that, obviously we can create, hopefully create a couple more good chances. Coach, thanks. Good luck. Thanks, Bruce. Tom McIntosh, University of Tulsa head men's soccer coach. Now back uh, to Lincoln. Thank you very much, Bruce. Again, it was an SMU offense that had averaged a goal per first half in each of their first six matchups this year. So credit to Tulsa. They keep them off the board. We are scoreless in Tulsa, Oklahoma. This our first matchup of the year in the American Athletic Conference in men's soccer. The three-time champs, Golden Hurricane, against the number 19 team in the nation. Nil-nil here on the American Digital Network. It's halftime. My mom actually never finished elementary school. Because my mother was a refugee, she didn't speak English when she arrived to this country. And she had told me when I was in high school, you need to get a degree for the both of us. In my four years at SMU, I've been able to accomplish three degrees. I've gone from Iraq to DC to Dallas. And I've been able to work with refugees, work with inmates, and also manage a political campaign. The collaborative environment here at SMU really provides a ton of opportunities for students. I'm Kovan Barzani. World changers are shaped here. I'm Kirk Smith, and this is my story. I'm a captain of TU's track and cross country teams, and I'm a Rhodes Scholar. My life's pretty simple. I run, I work, and then I run some more. My research focuses on combating climate change by driving down the cost of energy storage. And that's my story, so far. When I came into this classroom, we had 30 desks, 30 chairs, a teacher's desk, that was it. Donors Choose is the greatest, simplest idea. Teachers put up materials they need. You, as a donor, choose a school. And you can fund part of a project or the entire project. It is magic. With Donors Choose, you know exactly where it goes. Every dime, they feel like somebody in this country cares about me and my potential, and that's a powerful thing. Thanks for tuning in to our Wednesday edition of The Rise featuring our top Olympic sports headlines from around the conference. Let's take a look at last week's action starting off with women's soccer. East Carolina took home three American Weekly Awards after an undefeated week. It marks the first time in program history that the Pirates have had more than two weekly award winners. American goalkeeper of the week Michelle Newhouse made a career high eight saves in a one to one draw against number five Virginia last Sunday and became the first player this season to win multiple goalkeeper of the week honors across the American. A couple of other teams that will be looking for a victory on Thursday night to kick off conference play are UCF and Cincinnati. Women's soccer kicks off the American Digital Network fall coverage with the Bearcats hosting the Knights at Gettler Stadium Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern. It should be an exciting matchup as these teams have a combined 10 wins between the two of them. The 14th ranked Knights had three games called off due to Hurricane Irma and look forward to returning to the pitch on Thursday. Their last matchup took place the weekend of September 3rd when they won the Sun Devil Desert Classic hosted by Arizona State. The Bearcats, meanwhile, are number 25 in the latest top four soccer rankings. They are 6-1, including an undefeated record at home. Over on the men's side, Cincinnati made waves across the soccer scene when they defeated two top 25 opponents on the road, Kentucky and Bowling Green, who were number 13 and 19 in the polls, respectively. 
The Bearcats won three American Weekly Awards for their efforts and even got a shout out on Twitter from Cincinnati men's basketball coach Mick Cronin. That's always nice. Rookie midfielder Sean Clark propelled the Bearcats offense last week and scored the game winning goal in the win over Kentucky. He later scored three points, one goal and one assist in the win over Bowling Green on Saturday. SMU entered the national rankings this week and came in at number 19 in the United Soccer Coaches Top 25. Sophomore forward Garrett McLaughlin, who earned a spot on the Americans Honor Roll, was named Top Tour Soccer's Men's Player of the Week. He scored game-winning goals in matches for the Mustangs last week, a 4-0 win over Loyola Maryland and a 1-0 win over Brown. UConn forward Abdu Baki Jam scored the most points of anyone last week with six including back-to-back -back goals against North Florida on Saturday, grabbing the attention of the NCAA Twitter account. Meanwhile, with conference play starting up this week, SMU travels to Tulsa on Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern in a game that will air live on the American Digital Network. Fans can catch all the action for free on YouTube. In volleyball, Wichita State continues to send shockwaves across the American with their great start. They jumped back into the national rankings this week and entered the AVCA poll at number 24. It's the second ranking for the Shockers this season. Wichita State played stiff competition last week and defeated number eight Creighton in four sets before dropping a decision to number 19 Iowa State. Rookie libero Georgia Savita was named the Americans Defensive Player of the Week, while senior outside hitter Michaela Rodsep earned a spot on the honor roll. Memphis enjoyed a 3-0 weekend in its home opening tournament, and two players, Natalie Zanilato and Brianna Kadiku, landed on the Americans Honor Roll this week. Tulane is riding a six-match win streak and went 3-0 at home, with right-side hitter Kristen Thompson being named MVP of the Tulane Invitational. The Green Wave earned its second consecutive tournament title over the weekend and continues to lead the conference standings with an 11-2 mark. The American Digital Network begins volleyball coverage on Friday with Temple hosting Wichita State at McConaughey Hall. The Owls are 1, 2, and 3 in the conference in individual blocks per game and rank top 10 in the NCAA in the same category as a team. Over in cross country, the American continued its winning ways and brought home multiple first place finishes across the board individually and on the team side. The conference combined for seven first place finishes over the weekend, including Temple, who won its second consecutive meet. Congratulations to graduate student Mark Steinsberger for winning the individual title at the Ryder Invite for the second year in a row. UConn's women's team won their second consecutive meet when they took first at the UB Stampede Invitational. Tulane, who ranks 10th in the South Central region, won the LSU Invitational thanks to a first place finish from Emma Newton. My mom actually never finished elementary school. Because my mother was a refugee, she didn't speak English when she arrived to this country. And she had told me when I was in high school, you need to get a degree for the both of us. In my four years at SMU, I've been able to accomplish three degrees, I've gone from Iraq to DC to Dallas, and I've been able to work with refugees, work with inmates, and also manage a political campaign. The collaborative environment here at SMU really provides a ton of opportunities for students. I'm Kovan Barzani, world changers are shaped here. And Mauro Cicero has the Mustangs' first goal of the season. If the name Mauro Cicero sounds familiar, well, that's no coincidence. Cicero was named the American Athletic Conference Offensive Player of the Year in 2015. And this year, he's back. He's grown up a lot over the last three years. Um, you know, he, he leads more by example than he does by, um, by vocal yelling and, and, you know, those sorts of things. His most notable performance so far? His hat trick in a season opener against UC Davis that led SMU to a 3-2 victory. He got the PK, so it was tied 2-2, and then, you know, just he just got to create one chance in the last five minutes, and then it just went in. So it was really good, you know, for, for me and the whole team, you know, experience on your first game and start the season well. He knows the performances he lays down will uh, have a direct impact on where he ends up next year. So uh, he came in very focused and prepared for the season, and, um, you know, it's showing off in the first seven games. So where did these skills come from? Well, soccer success is no secret to the Citro family. 
Imagine having two older brothers that have played professionally and a father that played professional soccer. So you could say that Mario received a soccer ball around the same time that he got his pacifier. Every week and just spending on the couch with him and just watching soccer games, you know, kind of growing up like that and having him as an example of, you know, what he did in his life and, and having my brothers as well, just kind of setting the bar. You know, it's awesome having him, you know, come down every game. You know, he drives, you know, three hours down, three hours back from Oklahoma to come just, you know, come watch me. And, you know, it kind of motivates me, you know, that someone so, like cares so much about me. And, you know, sometimes I'll be playing bad and I can hear him, you know, say some bad words in Spanish and I kind of shake my head sometimes he's a little loud, but that's good. Last year as a junior, Mario struggled to see that same kind of success, scoring only three goals and one assist. But his senior season so far is showing that the off-season strengthened more than just his soccer skills. It's not just me being the leader. We have eight other seniors that you know are playing a lot, and that helps. You know, and we just we don't have to just rely on one player to be the leader. He's a guy that would rather show you what to do than have uh, have to yell at you. With already five goals and four assists, and we're not even halfway through the season, you could say we have a lot to look forward to from Mara. We always look forward to playing Tulsa, and you know, like we always just want to, especially knock them off, uh, with them being our closest rivals. For Campus Connect, this is SMU's Emma Kate View. Seven thousand student athletes rising to become champions in 21 different sports at 13 esteemed institutions across 11 states. 360,000 students and 2.6 million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American. I'm Kirk Smith and this is my story. I'm a captain of TU's track and cross country teams, and I'm a Rhodes Scholar. My life's pretty simple. I run, I work, and then I run some more. My research focuses on combating climate change by driving down the cost of energy storage. And that's my story. Here at the half in Tulsa, where the Golden Hurricane able to blank the Mustangs offense in that opening half. Mustangs return the favor as you're watching men's soccer here on the American Digital Network. Lincoln Rose, Roland Garensway. Soon enough, we'll check in with Bruce Howard down with the top man for SMU and Kevin Hudson. But uh, Roland, this is a matchup where we see just a total of seven shots in that opening half. And yet for a match with only seven shots, a lot of action back and forth. Opportunities building, just couldn't capitalize. Both teams eager to get forward and get chances on goal. Uh, like I said before, though, I think I'd like to see them be a little bit more patient in possession. They seem to be, you know, get put together three or four passes and keep possession for a little bit. But then a long ball up the top or down the flank kind of lets them down. So I think both teams are talented enough to keep the ball on the ground and really try to break open their opposing defense. Uh, we just haven't seen it quite so far. Tulsa outshoots SMU 4-3. to three. Neither team able to officially get a shot on goal. We did see SMU tattoo the post uh, of the opposing goal in which De Silva was in frame, but De Silva never had to lift a paw for a save. Well, that's true, and we just saw how dangerous they can be. Uh, but unfortunately couldn't put the ball in the back of the net. They had multiple uh, free kick and dead ball opportunities. Uh, beside the one that hit the one that hit the post, uh, Tulsa dealt with them pretty pretty easily. And conversely, you know, SMU were just rock solid in the back. Tulsa did get bored on a couple of occasions, but SMU, again, just really stifled every single Tulsa attack. Tulsa had a couple of corner kicks, including one very early on in the match. SMU was able to squeeze in a corner for a second-piece opportunity as well. But again... Neither team able to cross that threshold with the exception of one time when we saw the offside flag raised well in advance. But your guess is as good as mine how this clash will wind up by the end of today. Tulsa, a very strong home side, but SMU, number 19 in the country for a reason, having won their last three. Well, we've talked so much about how evenly matched these two teams are, and you're seeing it in this scoreline. You know, both teams have gotten forward, uh, but the defense have been relatively, relatively solid, as we said before. All right, let's go ahead and toss it down to Bruce. He's with SMU head coach Kevin Hudson. Coach Hudson, your thoughts on the first half? Yeah, it was a bit a bit slow from both teams. It was a Sunday afternoon, but I thought we held the ball well. We need to do a better job of being patient uh, when we build the game, but ultimately we're in a good spot at 0-0 at halftime, and I think the chances are coming. And you did a nice job 
out of stopping Tulsa's uh, open attack, didn't you? Sure, yeah. I mean, they're they're open when they play, but we understand that, and hopefully we have enough balance in our uh, in our structure going forward that we can kill off any counter and then, you know, hopefully counter back to them. All right, Coach, good luck in the second. Thank you. Coach Kevin Hudson, SMU. Guys? Thank you, Bruce. Obviously, both coaching staffs put in a lot of time scouting the opposition, but... <laughs> With these staffs being in place as long as they have, they know what to expect. They know what it means to be Tulsa's soccer, and they know what it means to be these Mustangs out there. Again, we're just seeing it in the stalemate. You know, both teams, again, just canceling each other out. Uh, but I, th I think we haven't lost anything in terms of, in terms of entertainment. Uh, we've seen some flair from some of these individuals, and, uh, you know, it's been really fun to watch so far. Well, through their first seven matches, the Mustangs have scored nine goals in the second half, though they have conceded most of the goals that they've allowed in the second half as well. Tulsa hopes to continue that part of the storyline. Otherwise, Tulsa, it's virtually a push after halftime. They've been neck and neck with all of their opponents this year in scoring, whether it be first half or second half. Uh, as a result, they find themselves at 2-3-1, and one, while SMU is 6-1-0. and oh. So we are underway here in the start of the second half. Again, the Golden Hurricanes wear the gray and white tops for the kits. All red for the visiting Mustangs out of SMU, making the trip up from Dallas, crossing the Red River, along with their women's club, who also made the trip and competed earlier today, losing an 11 seconds into overtime against the home side, Golden Hurricane. Uh, Chrissy Holmes with the Golden Goal, a classic start uh, for the Golden Hurricane on the women's table. Well, Tulsa so far in this second half have had a bit of patient possession and nice build-up play. Again, SMU stifled that attack down the right-hand side, but Tulsa moving forward quickly, and they're looking to capitalize here with a long throw, it looks like. So again, both teams have switched ends of the pitch. The toss coming up from Karai Easterling. And again, we know we have a member of the Easterling family tuned in. A reminder, you can always join in on the chat on YouTube. The great thing about the American Digital Network and with YouTube, the partnership, it's so easy these days when you have your TV, whether it's a smart TV or various boxes, whether it be Roku, Apple TV, a Fire Stick, the YouTube app, instead of watching this on your laptop or on your tablet, you can put it up on your full big screen TV. Absolutely. Or even if you're on the go, you can watch it on your mobile phone. Definitely a perfect, a perfect tool there to watch some quality soccer. I enjoyed uh, being able to tune in to you and Kit uh, for that matchup in Cincinnati on Thursday involving the women. That was a scoreless draw. We're going to get you, Roland Garen's way, your first goal of American Conference play here on ADN eventually. I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully it's a bicycle kick into the upper 90. Good look at both the coaches there. Right-footed delivery on this corner kick. Right in front of the frame. A little dangerous ball that's going to linger. This one from 17 will go one. That was the most dangerous opportunity so far for Tulsa. Got a couple stabs at it, but again, that resolute defensive SMU really stifling that Tulsa attack. They had the ball right into the six-yard box. It was a good delivery. Just couldn't quite get ahead on it. But again, look, he's going to get a stab here. Lays the ball off. Eventually, the ball goes wide of the goal, unfortunately, for Tulsa. Yeah, Thomas Wells takes that shot. Again, the freshman out of Wichita. Another one of the first-year collegiate athletes for the Golden Hurricane being featured today. And he is desperate to have another crack at that one. Absolutely. He had a, a clear side on goal. He tried to get that left peg on it. Unfortunately, just slices it slightly, and it goes down past that right post. Uh, the Mustangs had to be concerned as that ball was lingering inside their 18 for too long. Here's a chip inside the other way. And let's see if the Golden Hurricane can get it out of harm's way. They do. Out on the wing, a ball to run on. Flag will stay down. The cross towards the back post, nobody home. Simply the back line. Not enough people in the box there for that delivery, and it wasn't bad. And De Silva collides midair. It'll be a foul. Ball simply over to Tulsa. And concern for both sides. Citro with his shoulder going into De Silva. The referee is always going to protect the goalkeeper on that one. Eventually calls the foul on Cicero. Nothing malicious there. Had both eyes on the ball. But again, just a big collision by two big men. 
Now, obviously, you see that ball spill loose from De Silva, but that does not mean it's a free ball to continue on to. The moment an official sees the keeper in that harm's way, this will simply be a goal kick in a moment, or I should say a uh, kick for De Silva. Now the concern for Citro, that right shoulder. Definitely feel awkwardly. Again, that two years ago was your offensive player of the year. We've seen him over and over again come back to midfield, try to gain possession. He really wants to be in this game. Bruce, you have a good vantage point down there and have a sense of, uh, again, both benches around you. What do you see? Well, that was a heck of a collision between those two, and it's two guys in the air, and they collided, and obviously it was a foul on SMU, but it appears they're going to be okay. And Cicero, you know, he's all over the place. He controls things in the in the middle third, and then obviously was a part of that attack. But, you know, what I'm struck by is we mentioned it's warm, and thank you guys for, for not forcing <laughs> me to wear a jacket today, by the way. <laughs> but with the heat that we've had here, I've been remarkably impressed by the conditioning of these two teams. You know, we've seen some, some substitution. But for the most part, they've done a nice job of uh, staying hydrated and, and playing hard throughout. Yeah, it's a great diet. Eat whatever you want and work the sidelines of a late September soccer match in Tulsa. To Bruce's point, you know, both these teams have kept a pretty decent pace. Again, we mentioned the heat and the humidity and whatnot, but both these teams are really getting after it and trying to put on the show here. And a foul will keep us on this end with SMU. Citro able to come back on, a good sign. And it wasn't the shoulder that went into De Silva that he had been favoring. It was the one that braced his fall. And that is the foul that will draw the whistle and keep us on this half of the pitch. And another dead ball delivery coming from SMU. What can they do from this? Had more than a handful so far this game. At some point, they're going to need to capitalize. Coach McIntosh has had the benefit really for the past five years of not having to alter his staff. Coach Poor, Coach Cherbonnier. That means not having to readjust your recruiting and everything else that goes with the support that a head coach, a manager gets from the staff that surrounds them. Well, it goes the same for a staff as it does for a team. You know, the longer that you're together and the longer that you you know, have time together and spend time together, the more you can gel and sort of bounce ideas off each other. And I think that really shows in this squad. So again, this is the fifth match in frame for De Silva for Tulsa. He came in with 1.4 goals allowed per contest. At the moment, that average dipping. And this will just be a ball up ahead, but nobody there to capitalize. SMU has gotten forward quite well, really with just their front two, but I think when they do get up into the attacking third, there's not enough support around them. You've seen them cross the ball into the box and, and no one be home. So they really need to push forward in that midfield and some supply some support. See if Tulsa can bring its fans to the feed here. And diving stop. And it will be a save for Nelson. That ball had the pace taken off of it after the skip, though, towards the keeper. Might be our first shot on frame here, and that's Roly Rocha. Decent save. Nothing to worry about from Nelson. But again, our first shot on frame, I think, this whole entire game. Again, the wind blowing into the face of SMU this half. Ball chipped in. And if De Silva makes any mistake on that one, you may be looking at the visitors from Dallas taking the lead. It was a nice run to the right-hand flank and a pretty decent ball in, but De Silva, again, commanding his box, not being afraid to come off his line and gathers fairly easily. Right now, guiding Tulsa, Thomas Wells, but unable to get within 35 yards. De Silva well off of his line. Will feed it to the back defense. Hey. 
Carlos Cedro sends it out wide where they have some space. Assessing the options up ahead. They'll swing it out wide. Oh, they like the numbers here. Right on the edge of that 18. Quick left-footed strike to nine. A corner kick coming up, but the Silva comes through with a stop to keep us scoreless for now. Well, that was an absolutely brilliant individual effort. There's a great ball spread out wide. You see, it's going to come in on his left hand, on his left foot. It's a powerful strike on frame and a great save by De Silva. Quasho denied opening his account here in 2017, at least for now. The corner will be handled, handled by Rice. 21 career assists for the Mustang. And De Silva, aggressive, will punch it away. De Silva now back on his line. A good view out ahead. Loose ball, he gets to it. And a nice exchange by De Silva all around, and it keeps us with a simply a ho-hum 0-0 on the board. Well, De Silva's probably been Tulsa's man of the match so far. He's gotten him out of a lot of dangerous situations. He's been very confident in his box. And the Golden Hurricane offense reward their keeper. Give him a lead to defend. SMU trying to do what the past couple of opponents of Tulsa have been able to, and that's find multiple goals here. Still struggling to find the first. Tulsa doing a great job at applying pressure and regaining possession. At best defense, possession. Alper swings it out. Chipped in. It'll carry wide across the face of frame and simply be a goal kick here coming up for Michael Nelson. Nelson and his Mustangs a perfect 5-0 and back at home at Westcott Field. And on the road here today. Their only other trip away from home was that trek out to California for the Thursday-Sunday turnaround against Stanford and Santa Clara. They would beat Santa Clara 1-0 to kick off this three-match winning streak on that Sunday a couple weekends ago. Along the wing. Again towards the back post. And it's that back post where Tulsa found its initial go-ahead goal against Creighton. Uh, but nothing doing yet here today. So far, the delivery inside the box just hasn't been good enough. They've continuously overcrossed the ball. We're going to see it again here. Just a lofted ball, too much on it. And it's unfortunate. I think they've been finding a lot more, at least in the first half, uh, they've fin been finding a lot more success with Roranje down the left-hand side, number 14 for Tulsa. He's looked dangerous every single time he's been on the ball. Hasn't been on it at all so far this second half. I'd like to see him get uh, some more supply. 11 minutes has elapsed here in this second half. 56 minutes complete here in conference play. Ball well laid off. Just a tad high for the connection at the top of the 18. Mustangs the other way. I'd like to see that ball into feet. He's making a nice little diagonal run there. And unfortunately, Tulsa again gave away possession. Obviously, with this heat will come physical fatigue, but it's the mental fatigue you'll worry about when all of a sudden a tight match can be blown open by one little miscue. That miscue for now, though, will not come from De Silva in goal. A couple of touches before giving it over. Through the heart of the midfield. Oh, a nice touch to lay on, looking to run on. Tulsa was desperate for an offside flag. Not going to get it. A throw in here for SMU. 
has a nice bit of individual skill just to run at the back line of the defense. Try to be aggressive and put in a nice little through ball. Yeah, trying to connect with Garrett McLaughlin there, the sophomore from OKC. Another long throw in here into the box. Yeah, from inside the offensive third, a couple of headers. But the first man to put a boot on it wears the friendly kit in the gray and white. Again, glad to have you with us here on the American Digital Network. Ball sports, a busy time of year. Here on ADN, it means women's and men's soccer as well as volleyball. A lot of great storylines and a lot of optimistic programs entering conference play this time of year. Including a club like SMU, cracking the top 25 this week at number 19, now 6-1 and one on the season. Tulsa, of course, knows that they have been able to perform when it has mattered the most. Getting into the conference tournament and finding just enough in shootouts each of the last three years. He captured the last three conference titles. You can see from that stat right there that they're a very mentally tough team. They're going to have to be to get this W here today. Yeah, Tulsa has been in the NCAA tournament not just three straight years, but eight at last ten. Now, last year got knocked out by Creighton, the same team they saw last weekend in the opening round. Ranjay on the ball again. Uh, just wrong dance partner. Oh, that's again Tishiro coming back in defense. And winning the ball off of Ranjay. That's good work from him to track back. Oh, Mustangs perhaps make a mistake, but not made to pay. SMU is trying to do a little too much rather than get it out of their 18. But again, back in goal. Michael Nelson able to answer the call. Well, SMU seems like a team that wants to play out of the back and rather than just clear it. But we see there, they make a challenge. Tulsa wants a penalty, nothing doing. No surprise, Joe Ruiz, another freshman here for Tulsa. He from Bartlesville, Oklahoma, was trying to take advantage and open up his own account. Again, it's Nelson just with an easy save down to his left-hand side. Well, we're about to say farewell to the opening hour of play between these two sides. And really, never going to be a quality opportunity. So just one shot, give McLaughlin credit. He knew, might as well extend that boot and hope it can go on frame. No such luck. That's a pretty decent half chance there. There's a knife flick ball over to McLaughlin. He flicks the ball over a defender, gets a boot on it. But unfortunately, just can't get over the top of the ball. And it goes sailing. Mustangs lead the all-time series, 29 wins for SMU, 10 for Tulsa, and four draws in the first 43 meetings. We're going to get a dangerous free kick here from Tulsa, and that's where Ranjay, again, just trying to be dangerous and draws a free kick just outside the 18-yard box. Let's see what kind of quality Tulsa possess on dead ball opportunities. They are going to go ahead and stop that clock. Inside of a half hour as a yellow is awarded our first caution of the day. And for SMU picking up that caution, I believe it's Boston Gilbert, the sophomore out of San Antonio. Well, that's a tough challenge from Aranje. Both players went for the ball. Both players went sliding in. Fortunately, Aranje comes off the worst for the wear. That's unfortunate because Ranja has had bursts of quality, especially down this left-hand side. You can see he loves just to run at defenders. Try a few moves and get the ball in the back of the net.
walking off under his own power, which is fortunate to see. There is a slight limp. Hopefully he'll be able to you know, jog it off within the next minute or two. So Raranje, intelligent young man. Again, Menasha Raranje, the mechanical engineering major. A couple of goals this year. And non-conference play for the junior. Can Tulsa claim the advantage here? Right in the middle of that right in the middle of that goal. This is a great opportunity here for the Golden Hurricane. Cole Poppin at the moment standing over the ball. Oh, waiting the whistle. Poppin one assist through his first four matches this year. And goes right into the wall. Well, that's really unfortunate there for Tulsa. It's a perfect opportunity to go up 1 0. Unfortunately, can't find the quality. And it's a big jump from, from Mauro Cicciuto there to get the deflection. But again, here we go. Another dead ball opportunity for Tulsa. Cicciuto is already 6 3. It's almost unfair if you let him jump. So, corner kick coming up here from Pompin, the 13 year sophomore from Iowa. And while Tulsa got the first touch, not what they were looking for. Love the commitment, though. There's a pride of simply not allowing the defense to influence that ball. And Easterly here on another long throw. And Karan, the sophomore from Frankfurt, Germany. Easterling with the toss. Lobbed in towards the six, and they had stopped play before the throw. Uh, he may have crossed Maybe the, 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 the touch line. So again, a year ago, Tulsa Goes 10 5 and 5 overall on the season. As this program continues to excel under head coach Tom McIntosh. It was SMU looking to bounce back this year, and so far, so good for the Mustangs and their non conference slate. Citro looking ahead over the top. A ball to run on. De Silva back to his line in goal. Numbers will start even. This ball bends. De Silva able to come claim it. Eastling did well there on the left hand side. We had Tulsa defense to just get a deflection on it. And De Silva was able to, to gather easily. Join the breeze at their back right now. A little miscommunication, but Tulsa should be able to recover out on the wing. A little precision give and go, but the Mustangs able to, again, thwart the effort and win this ball back in touch. SMU are just so tough and physical back there. Hard to get any sort of dangerous opportunities. Jared Rice will have the throw here in a moment. Tulsa still with the shot edge, 7-6. to six. Both teams have two shots on goal here coming out of the locker room for the second half. But both De Silva and Nelson able to answer with a pair of saves. Tulsa with the edge on corners, four to two now. But of course, the one stat that matters, a couple of zeros.
Tulsa looking to defend its home pitch and take all three points here in the standings in the conference opener. Yeah, and just more physical play there from that Tulsa, that SMU defense, excuse me. So another corner kick now. Will this yield the goal that we've been waiting for? Fifth corner for the home side. Poppin delivers. And again, the Mustangs with the first head on it inside the six. They'll have a toss the other way. We've seen so many dead ball opportunities wasted by both sides. Well, we talk about the weather. Both coaches mindful of that. They've been keeping fresh legs. We've seen SMU now use five men off the bench. We've seen Tulsa do one better with six men off of the bench. Including Alex Harris for Tulsa. A couple of shots off of the bench. Two of the team's seven for the match. The Alex Harris at the bottom of your screen. Who wants it more? And a little help coming from Vargas. It's good for me to take, take the space provided to him. Lays it off into space, but that space quickly closed in on by the Mustangs and the all red kits here today. Oh, over the top, almost a dangerous 1v1. Back towards frame. Golden Hurricane able to get numbers to help out. There's a split second there where the Mustangs had the advantage. And now they'll reset. That was Williams providing the pressure for SMU. You saw his pace on display as well as his toughness. Unfortunately, just had no support around him. SMU, though, retained possession. They'll look to build from the back as well. again. See if Mustangs fire another one in the 18 and just hope Tulsa makes a misstep. Quick turn. A flag will stay down. The cross toward the back post. It'll carry. And there's your miscue. And just unable to take advantage. Another swipe out it to Silva with the kick save. Tulsa just hanging tough in defense there. That was some dangerous play there from SMU. But again, De Silva coming to save the day. Mustangs had two bites at the apple. Denied. And so SMU will again calmly try to build for another flurry. This is the sort of patience we've been waiting for, you know. Both teams have been sort of very eager to just push the ball forward whenever possible. This patience and possession is what's been needed so far in this game to just pass the ball around, make the simple pass, let the ball do the work, and really break down the opposing defense. This has not been your standard nil-nil. Moments ago, a brilliant kick save by De Silva about nine yards off of his line. Again, as I said before, he's been Tulsa's man of the match, bailing them out of so many potentially hairy, or hairy situations. Here's a look at that flurry. A clean path, a misstep, and they would still salvage this opportunity right here. You see these Tulsa defenders putting their bodies on a line, just throwing themselves in the line of fire. That's the kind of heart you like to see in a match like this. Look to be the right shin or the right knee of De Silva intervening. Tulsa with a strike of its own, well off the mark. A flat tire. And we see re-entering for Tulsa both Kyle Doubt from the Netherlands as well as Raranje for the first time since he was helped off. Looks like they're going to have another water break. 
And that is going to set us up for a final 20 minutes of play here in Tulsa. The Golden Hurricane and the Mustangs. We've seen opportunities for a scoring strike. Will one of these two teams be able to cross that finish line? We'll find out when we return here on ADN. When I came into this classroom, we had 30 desks, 30 chairs, a teacher's desk. That was it. Donors Choose is the greatest, simplest idea. Teachers put up materials they need. You, as a donor, choose a school. And you can fund part of a project or the entire project. It is magic. With Donors Choose, you know exactly where it goes, every dime. They feel like somebody in this country cares about me and my potential, and that's a powerful thing. Live today here on the American Digital Network on the campus of the University of Tulsa as TU welcomes SMU to town. You're looking at the Mustangs, number 19 in the nation. Oh, by the way, only picked to finish fifth in this league. Well, they have been overperforming, it seems, when you see that pick of them finishing fifth. But we're seeing Tulsa here just hang tough with this SMU side. Again, just very e evenly matched, both these teams. Been seeing a lot of heart, a lot of effort being put on. Unfortunately, just no goals. That's the only thing we're missing so far. And the water break is for everybody. Obviously, our officials very much a part of the match as well as our competitors in the white and red kits. And SMU has had some exciting moments, but it has not resulted in a goal. We've seen Tulsa with some opportunities earlier in this match as well. You wonder what the final 20 minutes have in store for us. A reminder of the college game, if we're tied after 20, we would tack on another 10 minutes with a golden goal available. Is that one well wide of the post? If we're even after 100, we would play another 10 minutes. After 110 minutes of even soccer, we would simply hand out a point apiece. You and I would have to split that third point. <laughs> might just give it to Bruce he's earned it you got to think neither team given the opportunities will be happy with a point both these clubs both for Tulsa who's playing at home want to take home three points and SMU wanting to beat another another rivalry and keep their, keep their streak going well of course a draw with a point apiece would mean SMU continuing its unbeaten streak to four while Tulsa would be getting off of a losing streak. But Tulsa at home wants three. SMU on the road with like at least one, if not the full three. Again, 18.50 to go here in the second half. The foul will stop play. Let's check back in with Bruce Howard down on the pitch. Well, guys, I think you could say that both teams have done a very nice job of stopping the other's strong points. Obviously, SMU has gummed it up in the middle of the field, stopped Tulsa from their fast break attack, and, and Tulsa has done a nice job of limiting the set pieces for SMU. I'd say, and, and, and really, you can comment to this, I, I think part of it has to do with the familiarity that these two programs have with each other. They've been playing for years against each other, and I think they, they have a pretty good, a good idea what to expect. Well, it speaks to their, you know, familiarity, but also the quality that both teams possess. You know, they have such great recruiting classes. We've been seeing a bunch of youngsters, a bunch of freshmen. Freshmen come in here and make a difference. So, again, yeah, familiarity helps, but it also helps to have quality across the starting 11 as well as strength and depth. Again, with Tulsa, you had the coaching staff for 23 years under Coach McIntosh for SMU. You're talking about Kevin Hudson, who's three years a head coach, but over a decade overall with this staff. Yeah, simply a throw in here. A good one, but straight to De Silva. Silva again, just hanging tough in his box. Saying, I'll take that. But that familiarity, not just these programs, but I talked about it earlier. These athletes, before they were Mustangs and members of the Golden Hurricane, a lot of them played youth soccer against or with one another, including back in the Dallas area. Well, so much talent comes out of the clubs like Austin Texans and their Houston branch, Houston Texans and things like that. They get a lot of experience playing in massive tournaments where they get clubs from all over the country to come. So a lot of these players have seen each other before. You saw the foul that sets up this free kick, although better than 50 yards away from Frim. See what Tulsa has in mind. Okay. 
inside of 17 minutes in regulation. That ball within 15 yards. Sent out wide into the wing. For Tulsa, again, that's Ranjay who's back in the match. And Mustang's not applying any pressure here on this ball. Tulsa able to regroup. Again, we're seeing this Tulsa side try to force balls in instead of making the simple pass there to Raranje. Easterly tries to play the ball up, up top to one of his forwards, and SMU is able to gather easily. Well, SMU, a lot of passes along that back line, but if you have one pass that's just a tad too cavalier, Tulsa was ready to jump on it. But they were playing a high press a little bit earlier on in the second half. I'd like to see them go back to that high press and really just pressure SMU into giving the ball back to them. It was successful for a little while while they were playing it, and they've since dropped off a bit. As promised, Citro playing in the midfield. Mustangs within 30, now along the wing. Fakes the cross, thought he might go to the right boot. Instead, the chip with the left over the top, and the flag is up off sun. That was a great bit of play. But again, the final ball just wasn't there for SMU. Well, Marcel De Silva. If you like goals, you haven't been a fan of him. He has kept us scoreless here today with a couple of great diving stops, one with his paw, the other with his right leg. Uh, if you are cheering for the home team today, though, you love him. He has been brilliant, everything you could ask for so far. Well, as solid as the SMU defense has been, De Silva for Tulsa has been a one-man brick wall, not letting anything into the back of his net and really commanding his, his box. Citro was frustrated there. Again, when your legs are that long, they can get tangled pretty quickly. We're going to see it here. Tries to do another pirouette and a hard challenge coming in there. And it looked like, again, it was initially the contact on the ball from Alex Harris, but as Citro rolled over, one of Harris's legs was trapped. Official appeared to handle it appropriately. Ball sent out wide off the right boot of Ponder. Left footed delivery from distance. Looking to set things up 17 yards away, but the Mustangs could not advance the cost. And yeah, that will be a foul. Ball will stay with Tulsa here. And we continue to see a little gamesmanship. A little extra touch on the ball to buy your teammates some time to get back. That's the foul. So Tulsa on the positive end of the pitch. Inside of 13 to go, but better than 50 yards out. Zach Stavro over the ball. Preseason all-conference. Again, the Dallas native. I should say a Dallas native. One of many for sure. Yes. SMU boasts some Oklahoma natives. Tulsa in return. Some Texans. That's a big part of teams that share conferences over the years. These days here in the American. When you go on the road, you're not just playing a match. You're often recruiting as well. Looking to thread it through, but able to recapture this ball, Bromstead. Over the top of the 18, and simply a modest hop into the arms of Michael Nelson. 
been a bit of an epidemic in this match from both sides, just not finding a quality final ball into the box. Sometimes not even having the, the numbers in there to be dangerous. Mentioned SMU has had seven different goal scorers this year. But the real credit is keeping their two top men with five goals apiece off the board so far. That includes Cicero, who had that hat trick in the first weekend against UC Davis this year. Jared Rice will have the toss. Well, stinks. Need a few more red shirts in the area. And just no support. Player trying to run at defenders and be dangerous. Trying to thread one through, but no mistake, the back line comes through again for the home side, Golden Hurricane. It's very unfortunate because that could have been very dangerous. But again, Garrett, Garrett McLaughlin getting the ball down the left-hand side, trying to run at defenders and potentially put a ball in the box, but no one home. Well, yeah, they beat Baylor, of course, Baylor's still Mustangs again looking over the top. Mauro Cicero. He'll slowly matriculate without the ball into towards the 18. Now he'll slam on the bricks. He's a good target otherwise. Instead, they're looking for another man. De Silva not allowing it. It's hard to sneak in onto Silva when you've got all red everything. Well, it's a bummer. You know, you're, you're seeing SMU get forward, and their movement off the ball has just been slightly lazy. You know, we have a lot of players ball watching. There's a player like McLaughlin who has it down the left-hand side and uh, just has zero support around him. It's been a little bit of unfortunate to see because you know these players have quality. You know they have individual skill. And you know they can finish. You know, you, you don't get to be number 19 in the country without having those qualities. On the ball for Tulsa, Easterling once again. And they will call the foul. This will be SMU. They'll have a favorable kick coming up. That's Cicero going down with about nine minutes to go here in regulation. We're not going to see any kind of caution for this. Right there, just... For Tulsa, that was Rocha who got his right foot caught up on Cicero. Well, this is still a dangerous range. We're able to organize at the top of the 18. Absolutely, they're going to try to put this ball back post. And really cause some problems for this Tulsa defense. And Jared Rice handles your set pieces for the most part. With eight and a half to go in a scoreless conference matchup. It's as if nobody else was within a mile of De Silva. Absolutely. De Silva again. It's really hanging tough in there. Squarely was focused on that ball all the way in to his mitts. Without a six hopper. Sent back up ahead. Again, it is a Sunday afternoon where now SMU has outshot Tulsa 9-8, including four shots on goal to two for the home side Golden Hurricane. But De Silva has come through with three saves. They have a team save as well. And I suspect that's on the kick save that I would probably still give to De Silva. Tulsa has been unable to capitalize on its five corner kicks here today. Easterling among three Mustangs. Still on the ball. Just has it poked away, but still with Tulsa at the top of the 18. I love that run from Easterling being very dangerous. But they're holding out for the perfect look rather than simply giving it a go. Absolutely. He had a little bit of a window if he would have taken a shot with his right foot. But again, just taking too many touches in the box. 
They had likely had a couple looks before that were better than what wound up being simply that floater to the far post. Sometimes you just got to pull the trigger, especially with teams of this much quality. You're not going to always get, you know, the perfect wide open one on one with the keeper. You have to know when you get, you know, a couple inches of space that you have to pull the trigger and take a shot. Because anything can happen, especially in a situation like that. You can get a deflection that takes it past the keeper, and then you're up 1 0 with only six and a half left. Again, Easterling here on the near side. A look on as Tulsa continues to advance this. The offensive third. For Tulsa, it's Chavez. Back to Dow. Dow tries to bend one in, splits a couple of teammates, and really credit the Mustangs for essentially marking well. And that was a great ball from Dow. It was a nice whipped in cross, very flat, had tons of pace on it. We're going to see it again here. Takes a look. That's a great cross. Wow, tons of quality on that cross. But again, just no one there to put a head on it. Talon Maples for SMU was one of the defenders again. That's just a freshman in the fire. His eighth match already. All eight matches here this year as a collegiate athlete. Helping out his goalkeeper that time around defensively. And a foul will send this to Tulsa around midfield. Bryce Clark, again the senior, stands over this ball in front of his head coach, who looks like he could still go a full 90. Talking about Kevin Hudson, who is a part of that 2000 College Cup with the Mustangs. Just could not get to that ball in time. So SMU will settle for another throw. You just wonder how many more opportunities there will be here in this final four and a half minutes. It's dangerous once we send you to that extra time with the 10 minutes on the clock because if the other team scores, you don't have the remainder of that clock to answer. That's your match, a golden goal as experienced in the women's matchup when again, Tulsa 11 seconds in broke the 2-2 tie, taking it 3-2. The Silva able to Squeeze that one in. Yeah, we saw 90 minutes and 11 seconds of women's soccer prior to this on this same pitch, holding up very well. Now, some more miscommunication from Easterling. And it looked like the SMU player touched it before the ball even went out. And he is going to get the yeah. handball. Easterling with a poor touch. Ball not fully out. Still on the line. Absolutely. Yep. Not fully out. The whole of the ball has to cross that white line. And a bit of a mental mistake there. Well, Easterling almost went through the disappointment of giving the ball away. Yeah, giving the ball away, and all of a sudden he can tell people that's what I intended for the whole time. <laughs> I knew he'd do that. I knew he would touch it. Poppin'. We'll send it in. And a one hopper back to Nelson. Just nobody could run on that ball. He gave him a shot, though. That wasn't a bad ball in. And just like that, it takes us down to three minutes here in the second half. Schilling has had a good... Good game so far defensively. Well, we see a lot of collegiate teams stand for the full 90. <laughs> but there's a certain kind of heat where they figure, you know what, we've got a, we still have another month and a half left to go. Let's conserve some energy. Velasquez back on the pitch for Tulsa. He's had a bit of a rest. We'll see what he can contribute in the last couple minutes. Philip Ponder was uh, 
a little guilty of taking a few strides, so they're going to reset things here for the throw. Still marking them back. Ninety-five seconds for one of these two sides to avoid overtime. If they could put home what would likely be a game winner and a three-point clincher. Nelson and goal for SMU has been called upon for two saves. De Silva and that back line for four for Tulsa. Not enough moving off the ball here for Tulsa. A lot of ball watching. And actually, our clock will point out is one minute off right now. So a minute 43 still to go. Here you see Ranje. Some good work down this left hand side again. Ball chipped in, back post again, nobody there to capitalize. We've seen some nice deliveries, but nobody to play with on the back end. As you said, Ranje with tons of quality, loves to run at the run at defenders. He's been their most dangerous attacker, I think, so far this match, and he hasn't been on the ball enough. Easterling will bring it across mid-pitch. And another great idea. And that's where you need to take this shot from 19, be able to fire one on frame, just can't get one on target. It was almost a very nice through ball, but SMU deliver, yeah. deal with that. We're going to see it here, just out of reach. And it's a shot, but it's not hit with tons of conviction. There were two opportunities lost right there. Absolutely. And Michael Nelson will likely be content to take his time to perfectly measure this one. Not cheated on that delivery. Tulsa eager to quickly return it to this end. So a reminder at the college game, if we are even and it appears we will be, we will head to overtime with 10 minutes on the clock, but a chance to avoid over time here. Tulsa looking to delight the fans in the final seconds, but it's not going to happen. 90 minutes of American Athletic Conference men's soccer complete. Still no decision. Three points still within reach for both Tulsa and SMU. Fans, when we come back here to TU, we will put 10 minutes on the clock with no obligation to play all 10. A golden goal available for both sides when we come back here on the American Digital Network. My mom actually never finished elementary school. Because my mother was a refugee, she didn't speak English when she arrived to this country. And she had told me when I was in high school, you need to get a degree for the both of us. In my four years at SMU, I've been able to accomplish three degrees. I've gone from Iraq to DC to Dallas. And I've been able to work with refugees, work with inmates, and also manage a political campaign. The collaborative environment here at SMU really provides a ton of opportunities for students. I'm Kovan Barzani. World changers are shaped here. And Mauro Cicero has the Mustangs' first goal of the season. If the name Mauro Cicero sounds familiar, well, that's no coincidence. Cicero was named the American Athletic Conference Offensive Player of the Year in 2015, and this year, he's back. He's grown up a lot over the last three years. Um, you know, he, he leads more by example than he does by, um, by vocal yelling and, and, you know, those sorts of things. His most notable performance so far? His hat trick in a season opener against UC Davis that led SMU to a 3-2 victory. He got the PK, so it was tied 2-2, and then you know just he just got to create one chance in the last five minutes, and then it just went in. 
So it was really good, you know, for, for me and the whole team, you know, experience on your first game and start the season well. He knows the performances he lays down will uh, have a direct impact on where he ends up next year. So uh, he came in very focused and prepared for the season and, um, you know, it's showing off in the first seven games. So where did these skills come from? Well, soccer success is no secret to the Cicero family. Imagine having two older brothers that have played professionally and a father that played professional soccer. So you could say that Mario received a soccer ball around the same time that he got his pacifier. Every week and just spending on the couch with him and just watching soccer games, you know, kind of growing up like that and having him as an example of, you know, what he did in his life and, and having my brothers as well, just kind of setting the bar. You know, it's awesome having him, you know, come down every game. You know, he drives, you know, three hours down, three hours back from Oklahoma to come just, you know, come watch me. And, you know, it kind of motivates me, you know, that someone so, like cares so much about me. And, you know, sometimes I'll be playing bad and I can hear him, you know, say some bad words in Spanish and I kind of shake my head sometimes he's a little loud but that's good. Last year as a junior Mario struggled to see that same kind of success scoring only three goals and one assist but his senior season so far is showing that the offseason strengthened more than just his soccer skills. Not just me being the leader we have eight other seniors that you know are playing a lot and that helps you know and we just we don't have to just rely on one player to be the leader. He's a guy that would rather show you what to do than have uh, have to yell at you. With already five goals and four assists and we're not even halfway through the season, you could say we have a lot to look forward to from Morrow. We always look forward to playing Tulsa and, you know, like we always just want to especially knock them off uh, with them being our closest rivals. For Campus Connect, this is SMU's Emma Kate View. I'm Kirk Smith and this is my story. I'm a captain of TU's track and cross country teams, and I'm a Rhodes Scholar. My life's pretty simple. I run, I work, and then I run some more. My research focuses on combating climate change by driving down the cost of energy storage. And that's my story, so far. Maybe not. Well, Kevin Hudson's Mustangs still have not allowed a goal over their last four matches. That dates back to their loss to Stanford. They shut out Santa Clara, Loyola, Maryland, and Brown most recently. Uh, the only difference is this time around, no goal for the Mustangs, through regulation at least. First time for the Mustangs in overtime, while Tulsa, already their fourth endeavor, mentioned Golden Hurricane beat Santa Clara 3-2 in double overtime. Drew with Wisconsin and the season opener two apiece after 110 minutes and most recently Creighton this last weekend this is back-to-back -back matches for Tulsa where 90 minutes was not enough we've seen their character they're not willing to give up you know, they're willing to put all on the line a few moments ago or actually a few minutes ago in the second half putting their bodies on the line Blocking on a couple of occasions, some SMU shots on goal. They really want to get the three points here to get today. Tulsa certainly had some opportunities down the stretch. The final minutes of regulation. Easterling will send it ahead. It looks to be a positive partner here as they tap it back. He goes right into a herd of three months. Six. Already a minute and a half here, elapsing. As to Silva, been brilliant today, both with his gloves, his feet, and also just the leadership of keeping the back line organized for the Golden Hurricane. And this will be a tad heavy, just able to salvage across. Oh, a contact and a big one here. A chance to slam the door on this match just two minutes into overtime with a free kick straight away coming up. We know this club has the quality to put a free kick away, but we're going to see the foul here. Absolutely good job there to get the, his body right between the defender and ball and draw the foul just outside the box. Emil Cueso came flying in, took out the senior Kai Doubt. Again, you see SMU's keeper and Nelson directing some traffic. While oh, Miguel Velasquez choosing the right blade of grass. Right. 
A chance to end it here with a golden goal in overtime. Velasquez. Again into the wall, SMU has done its job. And the Cicero again rising up and getting that deflection. The six foot three Mustang intervening. Tulsa not done yet. Oh my. Oh. <laughs> As Golden Hurricane continues to knock on the door, winning another set piece, this time a corner. Yeah, it's clear now. Velasquez, again, the third-year sophomore, the former Churchill High School Charger in San Antonio. Played 15 games as a freshman, red-shirted last year. But back here is a third-year sophomore. Right booted delivery to the back post. Header is on, and there's your game winner. The Golden Hurricane with the golden goal. As the final punctuation today, courtesy of Gustavo Vargas. What a thunderous header and a quality delivery there from Velasquez. There's a beautiful right-footed cross. And Gustavo Vargas puts the ball into the back of the net and gets the three points for Tulsa here at home. Vargas scored the go-ahead goal against Creighton this last weekend. Creighton had a chance to respond and would ultimately capture that match. Tonight, he scores when nobody has a chance to answer. Overtime, the game winner. And that's just a beautifully, again, just whip ball with pace right in front of that six-yard box. He comes back in back post, and Vargas is there. You see him crashing the box, really wants to get on the end of that one. He sticks it in the back of the net, and Tulsa, again, with a big win here at home. It was a hard-fought match and they get the W. The sophomore from Columbia gets Tulsa back on the winning track when it matters the most here in conference play in the American where Tulsa will look at the standings when they come out tomorrow atop at 1-0 and here in 2017, knocking off number 19 SMU in the conference opener here today. SMU is going to be so disappointed to give up the three points on this one. They were so resolute in their defense. They dealt with every single cross ball. And then all Tulsa needed was one opportunity. And Gustavo Vargas put the ball into the back of the net. And again, just SMU so disappointed. They take a lot of pride in defending. And they made one mistake. And it cost them the match. SMU will have a chance to bounce back this upcoming Friday when they host UCF on campus. Here they are. Meanwhile, Tulsa will be on the road to UConn looking to improve to 2-0. and oh. Well, again, it took more than 90 minutes, but it was well worth it for Tom McIntosh, you have to imagine. He's with our Bruce Howard. Well, Coach Velasquez to Vargas, a V to a V means a V, means a victory for you in overtime. How about that? Yeah, real happy about it. We obviously wanted to get off to a good start in conference play, and um, tremendous ball by Miguel, and uh, Gustavo, he's, he's a tremendous header of the ball. It was a great finish on his part. So, uh, really proud of those guys. You were so concerned about set pieces of SMU. You score on a set yeah. piece, but, but your team did a really nice job of limiting their opportunities. Yeah, I thought we defended the set piece as well. Uh, it's something we worked on. Uh, we've been pretty good defending set pieces, you know, for the most part. And um, So, just, yeah, proud of the guys. A lot defensively did a good job. They're very dangerous going forward. Uh, McLaughlin's obviously a threat every time they get the ball. And, uh, for the most part, I thought we limited uh, his influence. Um, yeah, and then I thought we possessed the ball pretty well as the game went on. Uh, Marcel made a couple big saves, uh, so hats off to him. And um, Yeah, it's good. Like I said, good to be 1-0. Really good opener, though. Both teams technically sound. Yeah, very good team. I mean, obviously, SMU is very good. We know that. Obviously, they're 6-1 for a reason. Um, so they got good players all over the park. Uh, they're a very experienced team. Um, so, you know, we're, we're thrilled with the win. I mean, it's a tough, tough team to beat. And uh, like I said, we're just, you know, happy to get it. All right, Coach, congratulations. Thanks. All right, let's welcome in Gustavo Vargas, who is the uh, game winner. Uh, first of all, just what happened in the goal? Tell me what happened. No, yeah, I saw Miguel. He's a Sudamerican guy. He said, hey, go to the second post. And I trust him. What are you thinking on a corner kick? What are the things that go through your mind as you get ready for a set piece like a corner? Uh, get in space, uh, an open space. Sometimes I go in front and do a, a movement to the second post. And what happened? This is a goal. Big thrill, isn't it? Yeah, it's a big victory. It was a hard game, but the coach and the team give me the confidence. And thank you so much. 
All right, Gustavo, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Gustavo Vargas, who had the game winner today for the University of Tulsa. Thank you, Bruce. Again, the Colombian, one of the heroes here in Tulsa. Golden Hurricane now 1-0 in conference, 3-3-1 overall. And, well, this is a program not defined by 90 minutes. They've won the last three conference titles in shootouts in that conference championship over the years. A classic showcase today between Tulsa and top 25 SMU. The Golden Hurricane sweep today's women's and men's doubleheader for Roland Garensway, Bruce Howard, and our entire AD and crew. I'm Lincoln Rose. What a matchup to kick off the 2017 campaign. in our next one. Uh, I don't know. Friday, right? I feel like we double dip, but maybe that's a women's. 